Oil is the gasket that seals the piston ring to the cylinder wall. We've talked about that for years. Yes. Now, some people don't understand that. And so you're going to have to explain a little bit what happens. Okay. okay. All right. So you have that piston ring, and its job is to seal the piston ring and the piston to the cylinder wall. wall. Yeah. Right. So we can keep all that combustion gas up there moving the piston, driving Instead it down. Instead of it going by the ring into the crankcase. Yes. Right. So oil isn't just the lubricant. It is the gasket because the piston ring doesn't actually touch every single part of it. And no. especially at mid-stroke, exactly. it's yeah. actually riding it's on flying. a film of oil. It's yes. flying. So yeah. oil is literally the gasket between the piston ring and the cylinder wall, no different than a rear main seal. It doesn't touch the crankshaft, actually. It's the, the film of oil between the lip seal and the crank. That yep. film of oil in there is what seals it. If it was just the lip riding on the crankshaft, it wouldn't last very long. No. It would burn out. It exactly. would burn right up. So the surface tension of the oil is what's actually helping it to seal. But there is an enemy working against oh, that geez. oil. Yes, indeed. Fuel is the enemy of your oil. It is trying to wash that oil film away, basically which is breaking down the gasket and these engines especially these engines why because this particular engine here is an all aluminum alcohol engine running on methanol and it's running you're pouring so much methanol into this engine mm -hmm. that it's very hard to keep all that fuel in the combustion chamber some of it is going to go out so the better ring seal that you have the less of that alcohol you're going to be losing past the ring right that mechanical injection just that constant flow dumping of fuel into that cylinder yeah. is killing it. So that's why we brought in the man, <laughs> Dr. Mark Marburg, because we do have- Hi, Mark. A, hey, Don, you know, it's, I've been standing here watching this, this take place, and it's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go home and watch this on YouTube. This is, this is so good, later, right? right? <laughs> but the thing is, so that fuel is the enemy, but there is a defense against Absolutely. that enemy. Yes. Right, right. It's it, Our defense is to come up with that balancing act. Mm -hmm. Just enough of the oil at the top and the fuel at the bottom mm -hmm. and this happy marriage in between. Mm -hmm. So our defense is mechanical. Yes. It's a texture again. You it's retain not, it. Exactly. It's, it's not that we're going to mess with either fluid. It's we're going to mechanically make this happy meeting. We're, we're going to use the tools that exactly. we have. Right. And try to make the seal as best as we can with what we are given. Exactly. The, the oil, the cylinder finish, the ring, the piston, it all makes a big difference. Exactly. It's, we're going we're gonna to achieve that balance. Mm -hmm. So we're not burning oil. We're not losing combustion. And we're durable. Yes. So let's yeah. try to make all three things happen. Because oil is a lubricant, and you should lubricate all these parts. Otherwise, right. they wear out. And it's also a coolant. Don't forget that part. Yes. Yeah, all, right. all those things are going on. So talk a little bit about what we've done different with this particular mm -hmm. block. Because this is something, we've been talking about this for a while. We know that surface tension is important. We want to retain the oil. But we did something really different using our, our, our buddy Brad Lagman at QMP. Mm -hmm. Did something really different in honing this block. Well, we've talked about this a couple of months ago. We, we, mm -hmm. we kind of let everybody know that we were doing something interesting here. And, you know, we, we're, we're fortunate enough to be able to use a $75,000 engine to, to <laughs> test the knowledge that we've gained just literally in the last year or so. What we're doing differently here is, of course, we've got this system where we can measure the finish in the bore so accurately, especially with, with Mark's help here. And what we've done here is we've done something that, 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 that we were kind of afraid to do, but because of the, this is the Ford engine, and because of the fact that there, there's a couple of uh, limitations on the Ford as far as piston rock is concerned, mm -hmm. we have gone a little tighter on the piston than we ever have in the past. Right. And Molly says that we, we can do that. Well, I was talking to Keith about this just this morning. Mm -hmm. He's gone all the way down to 4,000s clear. So it's the, not on the Ford, but on the Chevrolet. We're, yeah. we're close to that here. The last time we tried to do this test, we had a lot more clearance. The piston rock was such that when we got the results, they were good. They were good. They were okay, but they weren't what we were looking for. That's why we, we went farther on this particular engine, on this particular Ford for Donnie Shots, mm -hmm. than we have on any of the other Fords so far. And once we get this thing together and put it on the dyno, we should be able to see the results. On it, It'll show up. Yes, it will show up on power. It'll gain a little bit of power.
car, but what it will show up on is crankcase vacuum. That, that's, that's the measurement, key yes. measurement right there, exactly. is crankcase vacuum. And what's cool is, like I said, you have a history on, on this, this motor, engine. Probably got 50 dyno runs on this motor with, with everything being recorded. So we will be able to see exactly what the change is because all we're changing here is the cylinder finish, the, the clearance, the rings in the in the board. That's right. all we're changing here. Everything else, the cam, everything else, heads, everything else is the same. So we'll be able to tell when we get these results how much of an advantage the surface finish and the clearance does on this particular engine. So when you're looking at the finish mark, that because back to Brad Lagman at QMP honed it, but we also are using his incredible tool to hold the profilometer right. in the cylinder to measure it, and then we're using your incredible software to be able to see what that is. So. Yeah, right. Walk us through what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this is this is pretty different stuff, man. This is a radical surface from <laughs> right. what we're used to seeing. If we look at this and see just purely the number of valleys. You and I can, well, three of us can sit here and talk about this, yeah. but but the guys that are actually watching on, on the screen, some of these guys don't understand. They, they don't get what we're looking at. Here. Awesome point. So this is a picture of that surface as if we're going to take a walk mm -hmm. from inside out. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to walk along the edge, you know, the a line pulling out of the surface. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's a glorified record player needle. Sure. A crazy accurate one. Yeah, it's yeah, very and, accurate. Yeah. Um, it's much, much smaller. The ultimate hi-fi. Sure. <laughs> this is totally blown up now. We're going to stretch it out so we can see valleys. Mm -hmm. In reality, if we were looking in there with a microscope, you'll see that valleys are wide. In fact, much wider than they are deep. Mm -hmm. So these valleys that look like you know up and down vertical lines, they're they're really crazy wide. Mm -hmm. So that's where we get that flow of. You lubricant. can see that with the microscope. Part. Exactly right. You can see the valleys. Exactly. You can actually see what they're shaped like. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're not razor blade slices like this screen. Right. The screen exactly. is millions of. What we're saying right. is when someone looks at a cross hatch, they understand. Hey, cylinders have cross hatch. Right. It's those scratches, those are those valleys those you're valleys, seeing there. Right. Yeah. Is it scratches or valleys, it's a great but because of this yeah. scaling, they're not spread out. They're all crunched together, which is why they look so steep. Exactly. I had a guy ask me, how did you get a stylus into those little slits? <laughs> and I, so I was kind of a jerk. I said, well, how did you make slits? <laughs> And it's not. It's a honing stone, right? Yeah, it's, it's, right. Yeah. it's rocks. Yeah. And it's the it's bottom a, of the rock. It's a finish that, that, yeah. that is in just about every block that people ne just take for granted. They never looked at it as closely as we're looking at it now. Right. And when we look this close, we'll start to pick up on patterns. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's been the fun of this of late is people are now seeing what they've been making. Yeah. You know, they used to use maybe a number. You know, worst mm -hmm. case, it was RA. Yeah. Or the RK parameters. Well, now we see reality. Yep. Not just through the grid of a number. It's like anybody can see it. With, yeah. with, the, with this new software, it's great because anybody can buy this equipment here, plug it into their laptop, and they can see exactly what they're doing. Which the, the advantage of that is is some of these engine builders can actually change what they're doing based upon the new knowledge they're getting from this software. Absolutely, and yeah. that's that's the coolest. So let's talk a little bit about some of the nuance in the picture that mm -hmm. people might pick up on. Now, this is radical stuff, like you guys are hinting at. This surface is very different in terms of the appearance. Yes. As I look at this surface, as you look at this surface, mm -hmm. we see a lot more valleys maybe than we might have seen on a traditional race. Oh, engine. I, I can show you what they used to look like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're so, saving my computer right there. So the nuance of this is that just looks like a rough surface. Mm -hmm. But to you know, surface metrology guy to tribology, mm -hmm. there are actually two surfaces here. Right, That's they're they're very important for people yes. to know. Absolutely. Very important for people to know. So this pile of fuzz on the screen, mm -hmm. if we look you know, through a different set of eyes, we can kind of see this pink zone at the top mm -hmm. and a blue zone at the bottom. Right. Look at the difference in thickness of those zones. Yeah. Very distinct difference. Very distinct difference. So there is and, a difference. And, and what is that difference for the guys that, are, again, they're going, God, this is so much information. What, 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 is that, what does that mean? So let's, let's talk about what an ideal surface would be. An yeah. ideal surface, we don't want peaks. Right. I mean, that's, that's roughness. That's, that's going to be peaks, where? Peaks. Those are the things that are sticking up. Exactly. Yes. We don't want things sticking the, up. The things that the rings are going to hit. Exactly. Into. We so don't let's, want that. Let's get those out of the way. That, that's why it's smooth on the top. Here. 100%. Yes. Nailed it. 
Mm -hmm. So we don't want those. Those are debris, break-in, damage, you know, scuffing, all the bad in stuff. In the olden days, Mark, that's those were the things that people actually wanted so that the rings would actually seed in. They would wear themselves in. They would wear, literally wear out wearing themselves in. We don't do that anymore. Well, the, the funny thing is we used to use the driver as our plateau honing process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go break it in on the road. Right, yeah, well, right. now we're making a surface that's broken in. Already. Exactly. Yep. Right. Now, the cool thing, and I'm going to go next level on you here a little bit. Good. So we, okay. we know we've got peaks and valleys, mm -hmm. and we don't like peaks. We love valleys. Yeah. This feels like you really love valleys. <laughs> All right. We're showing her some love. We're showing yes. some love. Well, okay. Yes, we are. There's some deep affection in the valley department here. Yes. Right. But if I look at this surface really closely, I can still pick out two honing processes. Mm -hmm. I can pick out that there's a little, it's a little darker along the top. Mm -hmm. And then the valleys are kind of spread out in between. Mm -hmm. We have tools to help ourselves see that even better. I'm going to click over to a different graph over here. Sure. And we can see there are actually two statistical zones in this surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can separate out the fact that there was a plateau <laughs> and a valley process. So yes. there are two mechanical surfaces in here, one with little fine details and one that exactly. was really rough. Exactly. Yeah. So even in a surface to our eye that looks like a mess, there are two things going on very clearly. And this is where I want people to start thinking about is looking at the picture. What is my process doing? What did my finisher do? Mm -hmm. Let's take it a step further. What if I add strokes to the yeah. finisher? Okay. You can picture this top fuzz Moving farther down. Moving farther down. Yeah. Or what if we broke in the engine? Mm -hmm. We can picture the top fuzz maybe the, moving down. We'll see. We'll will see. Always bro I, break down. Right. Yeah. I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah. You know, with this much oil holding, maybe it's not going to move much. Maybe it'll move more. Well, you know what? This is an experiment that we talked about a couple of months right. ago, and it's an experiment that we haven't, that nobody's done yet, at least on one of these engines. So I, I think we all believe that it's going to work. Well, and but, it's based on some science, right? Yeah. What, what does working mean? What is it going to move a little and then be awesome? Is it right. going to be like that? We don't like know that, that right. for sure. Right. And, yeah. and that's one of the things that we're going to be learning during this process. So we had our small block Chevy here in this same location. Yeah. Uh, about a year ago, mm -hmm. and we had tried, we'll call it less value version of this yes, same finish, sure. and we saw some tremendous results in what that did for that gasoline engine, and that's the key. That was a On gasoline the seal, engine. The, the, yeah. the, the ring seal was better. Mm -hmm. Right, we can see we, in the blow by gauge. That. Yes, yeah, we can measure that on the blow by gauge. Right, it was better. The reason for showing the valley some love here yeah. is that we know that when you go from gasoline to methanol, we're going to double the air fuel ratio. There's going to be twice right. as much fuel yeah. going through this engine than the gasoline engine. So, so you know what we decided to do? We decided to double the valley. Double so, the <laughs> because of that, and because methanol is, is kind of like dumping water into an engine, for Christ's sakes, because it doesn't mix with gasoline at all, right. um, we need that extra oil surface from the valleys. Yep. Yes. The oil, the oil is going to be in those valleys. We need that extra oil surface to keep the methanol from washing the oil away from the ring. Absolutely. Because as Lake said in the beginning, the oil is part of the seal. Yep. Yeah, it's absolutely. very important for, for, for seal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the goal, is it? Again, experimental project to see what happens. Yeah. But we decided, let's. we have the ability to, to measure it now. We can see it. So yeah. it's like, hey, let's make sure. Let's try this different process. Yeah. Let's see if we can generate deeper valley to hold more oil to be able to hopefully create a better ceiling right. and longer lasting surface. Yeah, absolutely. Because you can just make it rough and it would hold a lot of oil. But I don't think it's going to last very long. And if you make it rough to hold a lot of oil, what's your break-in going to be? That's the problem. If it's a pea cone. See, that's yeah. the problem, right. is that the break-in procedure is going to take so much longer. And sometimes you might get a, a situation, especially on methanol, where it doesn't break in correctly. Or I've been in situations where it just doesn't break in until you scuff. Exactly, exactly. It and we never found and, a happy and, and place. And because yeah. of that, that, that's bad for one of these motors here. We don't want scuff at mm -hmm. all. Um, so that, that's why this whole project is going to be interesting because it, it's something different than we've ever done. 
That's awesome. Um, it, it's, it, it's the new technology that we've come up with, that you guys have come up with on surface finish, total seal, and Mark. And Dr. Mark, it, we, well, I'm very excited to see the results on this. We're going to have this motor together probably in a week or so, and, and we'll, after the dyno results, we'll, we'll get back together and show everybody what that's right. what worked. Because so that's, that's the great part, right, is we have all these wonderful partners that we're able to do this kind of work, and then we share everything we learn it's, it's, with you. It's not a secret. We're not doing this to keep secrets. What we're doing is to, to inform the rest of the, the world what works really well. Right. But there's some new technology here that we're finding out that works well. Why, why wouldn't we want to share that with everybody? Well, yeah. I, if I can tell you right now, you could make a couple of changes to your engine. It would triple the life of your engine. You'd probably do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the reality is this. You can. Yeah. It's, it's not even make-believe. Yeah. That you know, 20 years ago, the state-of-the-art piston ring package in NASCAR was an 043, yeah. 043, 3 millimeter. That was small. Oh, that yeah. It's yeah. hugely small. Right. Del Camale. And those engines would last one race. That was it. 500 miles, everything's worn out. And you got to rebuild it and go again. You, take the, you look at the cylinder walls after 500 miles, they're junk. Yeah. Right. You had to hone them a yeah. few thousands oversized yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to clean them up. Yeah. Well, today... They run a 0.5 millimeter. That's an 020 top ring. A 0.6 millimeter second ring, two millimeter oil ring, and those short blocks now live 1,500 race miles. The cylinders outlive the springs two to one. Not only that, Lake, but they seal the whole time. A lot of folks are afraid of that thin ring. Right. But when you get that thing in that the 0.5, I'm not sure whether you can do gas ports on that one yet. We did. Oh, you did. <laughs> oh, but with, with the gas ports, you know, with that small ring, it, the, the gas ports help push the ring against the cylinder and seal it. Yep. It might not seal where the crap when you're just spinning it over by hand, mm. but as soon as you light that engine, it's Boom. sealed up. Yep. It's sealed up. And because it's such a thin ring, the and friction stuff. level is a lot less. And like you just said, it conforms. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, what we have to deal with on the aluminum block is that once, as the temperature goes from the room temperature to 300 degrees or whatever you know, whatever your oil temperature is, the the cylinders on the aluminum block they, they move. You can't keep them from moving around a little bit. The thinner ring, the gas ports help us seal that 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 imperfection. Oh, absolutely. And when you see that better ring seal and you see that reduction in ring drag friction and all that. It's big. I'm not going to give it away, but we did one of my dad's old NASCAR engines recently, and we're talking about huge power gains. Huge. Like, not 10, not 20, we're, we're talking about, more than 30. We're talking about technology that's 30 years apart that made that much difference. Yeah. yeah. Same blocks, heads, yeah. cranks, cams, all that stuff. The only thing we changed, piston, ring, and hone. And it was significant gains. I saw the numbers. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what this engine tells us making these changes. What's awesome about this, though, is you guys are in a position to take a big swing. Right. That's what As we're opposed here, yeah. to in, in a place where you're running a little bit scared mm -hmm. and you'll do a little change and you'll never really know if it made a difference. Right. Right. So taking a big swing like this radically different surface can, can either you know, set us down a huge path or take a bigger step back. Right. But we're taking giant technology leaps, not little fearful adjustments. You know, we, we've been so lucky here at Shavers. You know, I've been here for, what, 25 years now. We've been so lucky because Ron allows us to make changes that are huge. Mm -hmm. we, we've done stuff that people would never, never try before. And you know what? It doesn't always work. No, but absolutely not. But when it does work... It's 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 huge, you know. Mm -hmm. Again, when I you know, twenty years ago, I was on the dyno for the very first time. We made eight hundred horsepower. That was huge. Yeah. Twenty some years ago. Right. You know, these the, when we first got this Ford, it was nine hundred and sixty horsepower. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a big yeah. difference. It's a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> well, like you said, that's the culture here. Ron instilled it from yeah, the very exactly. beginning. It's this place is about innovation, about trying new things, which is. Yeah. Why I hang out here all the time, you know, and so it does it, some good testing. Yeah. Oh yeah, but but that's the whole thing is you, you got to be willing to make a change and try it out to see what it is. So once we know, you'll know.